Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I ask what would happen if we replace SLS's upper stage, the exploration upper stage, with a methane stage, specifically the reusable Star Stage 2, though a sized up version of Star Stage 2 because Star Stage 2 itself that I showed in the Starship videos would be too small for SLS in this case. So a slightly upscaled version of Star Stage 2 uh, so that it could be reused, right? Because the exploration upper stage right now cannot be reused. But potentially, if we replace it with a reusable upper stage, it would cut down costs. Also, methane and oxygen is a little bit easier to handle, though, of course, it's not going to get the same payload capacity to the moon or Mars, so that's downside. But what would happen if we do this is the question. And I also had to upscale the engines that we have on Star Stage 2, so instead of using SE, that, whoop, SE 2008s, we have 2012s, which, which means that instead of getting 70 kilonewtons, these get uh, 120 kilonewtons each. So they're bigger, and the tank is bigger. It was meant to fit the 10 meter fairing, and so I made it as big as I could, but we're not actually using all of the available volume here. So it is underfueled, if you will, because I didn't think that the additional fuel would be useful. It would overburden the core, which is the key to SLS, really. So we are at 160 tons compared to a little over 90 tons for the Starship one. Of course, this would not fit in Starship's bay. Uh, it's possible to make a compromise one that could work both on SLS and Starship. One thing you can't do is make a hydrogen stage for Starship because, uh, like this, I mean, because that would be too wide because the hydrogen is not dense enough. So this is the configuration and just a sanity check on the dry mass. Let us use a procedural tank to compare. Okay, that's probably a good facsimile. So if we fill this with the methane and oxygen, what we get is 187 tons, dry mass 7.4 tons. So having a dry mass of 9.3 tons is fairly reasonable with the insulation, control unit, and RCS. In fact, on this one, we're not even using the best possible tank with the aluminum lithium. Uh, we could get down to six tons, or if we use, uh, not magic, composite tanks, we could get it down to five tons. And that's with 184 tons of fuel compared to 160 tons. So we've got plenty of uh, spare capacity here, or we could reduce its mass. We're very, being very conservative, as usual. The engines are the same as with Star Stage 2 in Starship, so that's 367 second ISP gas generator. So I have put a 40 ton payload here. I do not know if a 40 ton payload will work. I have not launched this. Uh, we're using what I think is a standard size fairing for SLS uh, 10 meter. So yeah, the actual stage there is under 10 meters. You'll note that because it's a capsule shaped, we're putting it inside the fairing instead of having it separate like EUS normally would be. So that is a minor downside if we need to actually have something that fills up the fairing, which seems, I think, would be fairly rare. So uh, that's that's a lot of fairing space for something. I tried putting it on uh, the Launch Complex 39B, but it kept exploding there. So we're just going to launch it off of the normal KSC launch pad. Let's see what happens. Okay, here we go. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition. And launch. The methane stage is a heavier burden than in the exploration upper stage, but it shouldn't be so much so that it would actually put too much on the core or anything like that. Structurally, the core would be e able to take it easily, especially since it's rated for a higher, uh, low Earth orbit capacity. Now, 40 tons would be more than the capacity of EUS, so I doubt that that's going to work. But might as well start out optimistic, I suppose. EUS structurally might be quite heavy. After all, it is a hydrogen tank up there. So, depends how that all shakes up. Okay, 
separation of boosters. Maybe a little bit late, but that will only hurt us, not help us. We don't want the fairings to go a little... Oh, that's... Oh, I left on the radial decouplers for the shuttle mice. So, of course, if we wanted to potentially reuse the RS-25s, there is the shuttle mouse option. Yeah, of course, reusable boosters, uh, if you want, are available with the Raptor 9 option. Okay, fairing set at 100 kilometers. Alright. Well, it's gonna be tight. Sort of as expected. We have to keep this pitch and all. I could probably optimize the trajectory a bit, but... Uh, from my prior experiences with SLS, it doesn't seem to matter <laughs> too much uh, at least if we're just going by what they expect to get out of it we tend to overperform rather than underperform I did not fit the parachutes onto the star stage 2 so let's put a little asterisk on there for that but the parachute mass we could compensate for by reducing the mass of the structure of the fuel tank, right? We already demonstrated that it is uh, quite heavy and the parachutes are not going to be that heavy, so we could cut out the parachute mass out of the mass that we already have on the fuel tank. The heat shield mass is separate, by the way, as is this decoupler and that payload adapter. Okay, well, we will need some time for the still long duration upper stage to work. Okay, separation and ignition. Well, uh, if that 4,800 is correct, it's still close. So, we'll see. We might have to pitch up to compensate for time we're gonna take. It is currently an 18 minute stage, so it's about the same length as EUS. It also has four engines, so I, I, I assume this will please NASA. I mean, same length, same engines, just uh, slightly more powerful engines to compensate for the heavier stage. Because, again, it's uh, less efficient, so it needs to be heavier. Okay, I don't think I've given it enough time here. I mean, on the bright side, the stage would be able to save itself on re-entry if it failed to make orbit. On the downside, the payload's the expensive part, and it would not be able to save itself. And we're in the atmosphere again there. It's close, though. But this is obviously not optimal. Okay, and I'll leave it running a little bit. We would be able to make orbit. We'd have to do a small RCS burn at Apoapsis, but we can round that out. Uh, but only 2,772, so that can't transfer to the moon. We we're about 400 short, but also there was inefficiency because I didn't anticipate how much I, how much time to Apoapsis I needed to reserve. So we're going to reserve some more this time and launch it a little bit better. But I think we should also reduce the size of the payload. So instead of going with 40 tons, let's try 35. I'm also adding the parachutes here, so the total dry mass of this is 15.4 tons, so that's... Well, actually we can remove that, so the, just the payload adapter is 1.5... Uh, 1.4 tons, but uh, this is 14 tons now, so that's just what's re-entering. Uh, we overdid the parachutes then because I actually counted the payload adapter with it. So, yeah, 14 tons dry, and... Well, so it's good that we include a payload adapter. That'll give some room just in case we have some uh, propellant left during re-entry. And we are going with a 35 ton tank. And now we will try that. Uh, we will reroute to the payload because... Oh, no. Reroute to the payload. There we go. So we have pretty close to 13,000 meters per second there it says. And we will see what happens this time. 
Okay, I've lined up with the moon, but it's really, really cloudy out, so we've got big shadow on us. So, it's not that cloudy, actually, it's just that we have a serious shadow on the rocket. As, as, so, throttle up, SAS on, ignition. And launch. Well, that's better. We are above the clouds now. Okay... Booster set. And close to this stage's end. And separation and ignition. Oop, there we go. Now it's gotta be close again. Proper read there. Alright. Probably want to pitch up, but we're higher this time, so we've got some room to work with. Okay, we're getting there. But will we get there with enough to transfer to the moon, is the question. It looks too tight. Okay, well, it's a little bit lopsided, but basically with 35 tons here, we managed to keep 3,060. And if we take a look at how much it's going to cost from this orbit, let's say we wait in orbit. I mean, we could have just kept burning, actually. Not that that would have helped. Well, it could have helped a little bit. We probably want a free return just for the stage. Seven days. I wonder if it would get back properly like that. But we don't have quite enough Delta V there. So yeah, we're coming up a tiny bit short now. 68, 69-ish. Now I'll try it one more time to really nail it and test the re-entry bit. Okay, maybe third time's the charm here. I've lowered it down to 33 tons payload. And we have throttle up, SAS on, ignition. And launch. And again, the reason why this is carrying a little bit less payload to the moon compared to Starship is we have to use the stage to complete orbit in this case. Whereas Starship was super heavy, given that that on the pad is nearly twice as heavy as SLS, uh, of course, can get the entire stage into orbit without using it. Uh, we have some issues here. I don't want the fairings to go at the same time. Whoops. Okay, booster set. Okay. Upper stage time again. And that's a nice safe orbit by any measure. 282 by 207. And again, we probably could have gone ahead and started the transfer immediately, but we'll wait in orbit because they almost certainly would. Well, right now I'll take this. The periapsis is a bit high over the moon. The payload would have to do a minor correction to bring it a little bit lower, but I think that's reasonable. And ignition. And we proceed. Okay, and oop. all right, let's stop it right there. Only 64 meters per second left over here. That's a fine moon encounter. I, I'm sure it would be possible for the payload to deal with that. So let us see here. Uh, yep, that's the order of things. So I'm just going to separate off the payload, assuming it can handle the rest of it. Close the payload. And we want to deorbit the payload adapter, so that's hanging out with us for a little bit longer. Uh, in particular, after we passed... Ooh, that's a long... Longer orbit than I want. Oops, I think I went the wrong way around. Uh oh may have to do my own correction here. Yeah, it's the wrong way around. Uh-oh. If you go this way around, that's going to take longer. 
Well, that looks very flingy outy, actually. Maybe we should just retro into uh, lower orbit. Let's just have this stage miss the moon entirely. Okay, 60 kilometers it is. And we have 85 meters per second left. Yeah, I don't think eight days would be good. Five days, we really needed to do this, I think. Taking a look at the electric charge. Of course, I could just dump more batteries in, but... I would probably need to make it heavier. Africa, it seems, maybe? Anyway, let's get rid of the payload fairing. A payload adapter, I mean. And off it goes. Okay, I'm assuming that the scaled up pod will work just as well. With a scaled up heat shield and everything, but let's find out. Okay, indeed, we have successfully survived that. Okay. Parachute pre-deployment. And on the parachutes, we are at 6.3 meters per second, which is safe. So, yes, it will eventually touch down safely, barring any weird glitch. So there you have it, a mephlox stage for SLS, a reusable mephlox stage. You get 33 tons, take it or leave it. Uh, so, yep, well, well, we'll think about using it. Maybe it's a good idea. Of course, I wouldn't recover it each time for KSP you know, purposes, but we have demonstrated that it can work, just like the shuttle mice and uh, that sort of thing. It'll be a thing to think about. I think I would rather uh, sit through a long burn with this thing rather than a long burn with EUS, but again, it does have lower payload capacity to the moon and of course to Mars as well. So that has to be weighed in consideration. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.